when you come to the house of God be full of faith one moment of encounter in his presence can literally rewrite your destiny hallelujah the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, For without faith, it is impossible to please him, the him being God. For he that cometh to God must believe, number one, that he exists. And then number two, that he is the rewarder or a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. May the Lord do us good tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me start by prophesying over your life. I think when I was praying, the Lord gave me a scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 9. I have to obey God and speak it over your life. Then I'll charge our hearts tonight. Just allow me read and then I'll speak it over your life. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee, this is the scripture that came to me while I was praying, into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of oil of olive and honey verse 9 a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness thou shalt not lack anything in it a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig it brass. Amen. This is provision even in the times of scarcity. Even though I'm not teaching on finances tonight, but I have to obey the Lord in the name of Jesus. By the power of prophecy, I'm praying for you that beginning from this week, may you step into a strange level of financial testimonies. Amen. We call upon God who has graciously shown us mercy that in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone connected to this grace, I'm prophesying to you by the Spirit of the living God, not, not in two weeks, not in three weeks, not next year, not in March. You have the faith to believe I speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, step into a realm of extraordinary abundance. <laughs> abundance by the wisdom of God abundance by the favor of God abundance by strategic relationships abundance by inheritance in the name of Jesus so don't be surprised if someone who has not called you in a long time calls you and says God just put it in my heart that for the remaining part of this year every month not once, not twice, every month that I should be blessing you and blessing your children. You have the faith to believe it. I speak it over your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. I remember very humorously, I was speaking here, I think it was last year or so. Um, I used to have a dog. The dog is now dead. And I just mentioned the dog and someone called from US and said I'll be taking care of the dog every week and every month i'll be sending money from uk and i said what is all this <laughs> for a dog what is it eating let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me let your power holy ghost power rest on me Rest on me, oh, 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 rest on me, oh, 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 rest on me, oh, 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 rest on me, Holy Ghost power, rest on me. I've taught you that it is what is upon you that controls everything around you. Believe me when I tell you that. It is what comes on your head that controls what is around you. It says, thou anointest my head with oil, but I see the effect of what is on my head on my cup. He doesn't anoint the cup. Thou anointest my head with oil, 
and my cup runneth over in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God is doing something across the globe that is phenomenal. God is doing something in Africa that is phenomenal. As a man of God, I was sharing with a few people back in Lagos. I'm seeing the formation of a cloud that once happened before we came to the scene. There is a cloud that is gathering again. God is moving in a way perhaps not exact, but a way similar to what he has done before. Maybe before some of us were born, but he's coming again. And we are seeing the formation of that prophetic cloud gathering from region to region, gathering from nation to nation, gathering from continent to continent. Perhaps could it be the formation for the last move of God before Jesus returns? I doubt that there will be many, many other moves. The signs are already showing that we are wrapping up. It is true, but we are seeing a heavy cloud that is forming. And this cloud is going to pour out rain. That rain is not going to be little. That rain will last. Hallelujah. It is true. This is not a cloud that is just forming. Just No, 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 no. This one is beyond the fist of a man's hand. It is a very mighty thick cloud. The Spirit of God Himself is gathering that cloud. It's a mighty rain of revival. It's a mighty rain of outpouring. It's a mighty rain of awakenings. It is the reenacting of Ezekiel 37 again. And I have seen this many times in my visions. In 2005, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw the continent of Asia, I saw fire just like a single candlestick and I saw many Chinese young people and it came upon one, just one person and it began to spread, began to spread, began to spread. You see, I have seen the same formation in Africa because this is the continent that will present Christ to the world before Jesus returns. It is in prophecy. It is true. And if you are here gathered tonight, let me tell you, it is because there is something within your spirit. Tonight, deep is about to call unto deep. Deep is about to call unto deep. Deep is about to call unto deep. Doesn't matter whether you are a male or female. Doesn't matter whether you are young or old. It is a prophetic formation over something mighty that God is doing and we're glad that we'll be witnessing this in our lifetime the fathers in the next 10 to 20 years the truth is that for the fathers the cloud is already shifting they are already seeing the signs there are chariots ready to come and pick them it will not be immediate but it will not be very long there is a baton in the spirit, a transference, genuine, authentic graces and mantles over the next decade. Hear me, I'm saying this by the spirit of prophecy that over the next 10 years, there will be a prophetic transition within the body of Christ. There are many, others have gone still within the decade men like Reinhard Bonke, men like T.L. Osborne, Pat Robinson left this year, Maurice Sorulo, they have gone. Our fathers in Nigeria are still here because of their covenant of long life. They will still be here for a while, but it will not be for too long. They know it, we know it. So there is a transition in the spirit. And Elijah told Elisha, if you can see me, if you can see me, if you will not lose focus and see me. But you see, 
it is not only a handing over of mantles that will be happening there are other mantles that could not be handed over because there were no faithful vessels to carry it and when the carriers were old all those who were in front of them were in the order of Gehazi and Judas so they could not hand over the mantle and many of them died with the mantles but you see mantles don't go back to heaven no that means they are somewhere being preserved by the spirit of grace waiting for vessels that will become fit and dexterous listen you will see mantles that we have not seen in the body of Christ maybe for the last hundred years I pray we have the grace to receive them you will see people walk in mantles that the last person who walked in it was written in the Bible and you are wondering where did this grace come from this blend of spiritual formation where is this one coming from I have seen this and it will happen there is a mighty formation if you are not aware of this it is because you are not spiritual the Bible says these days will be like the days of Noah in the days of Noah there were two groups of people there were those who understood what God was doing and they were participating in the building of the ark and they were the mockers and the naysayers completely disinterested but the Bible says it was God himself that came to shut the door and when he shut the door the flood came and everyone who was not in that act of safety died everyone hallelujah one of the graces that the apostolic ministry enjoys is access to the dealings of God per season per dispensation so that you understand what God is doing and then you can interpret what God is doing and help his people prepare so that when he comes in that regard they are vessels that are prepared to be mightily used by him I have a brief charge tonight and the title of my message is this is the generation this is the generation I'm teaching tonight on the making of mighty men I want to show you from scripture how men become mighty in the spirit I want to show you how people become of weight and stature in the spirit and if you pay attention to what you are learning tonight you will become such a mighty vessel this is the generation hmm. I wonder how we're going to go today. Hey, Shabarus Kadia, Kratakatabalakos, Sabrenda Gebalash, Krapatos, Sabre, Kadi, Balato, Shabris, Embrege Bereko, Shabras Katabalais, Kiam, Baraso, Biata, Segedesh. Krata bareza de belen taski balakus yata. Christ kanina mahashena manda gebaratos kotovraskia. Imbra kata di balas ananasha baratos kabiata. Praige de beleda sabaranto sovraski balikapa. Imbra teka baratos koto prati balakus sabrist. Skadi balega de prata kata fraskata balanda gebarus yate. Help us, Spirit of the Living God. Okay, please be seated. There are three emphases of the Spirit. Let me start from there. There are three prophetic emphases of the Spirit in these last days. I have taught you, but let me recap. Let me start from there. Number one 
is the world evangelization. This is the first emphasis of the Spirit in this prophetic season that we are in. World evangelization. The Spirit of God like never before is raising men and he's moving across the length and the breadth of this earth for that one final wave that will bring in the harvest. Are we together? In order of divine priority, God's emphasis right now is a greater determination by the Spirit to find laborers that can make world evangelization a success. Number two, what is the second emphasis of the Spirit in this season? The maturity of the saints. The maturity of the saints. In addition to world evangelization, the second emphasis of the Spirit in this season is that the saints come into an experience of maturity, holistic maturity. Number three, what is the third emphasis of the Spirit over the nations in this season? Territorial transformation. That territories will experience the light, the power, the wisdom of God in a way that the cosmos will have to admit that this is the workings of God. And when it has to do with territorial transformation, it's beyond just healings and supernatural manifestations, witty inventions, creativity, superior ideas by the Spirit that will be revealed through the saints. It's important for you to know this. This is what God is doing in this season. World evangelization. What we are doing in the crusades and the conferences across is in honor to this call and this mandate that he desires that all people be saved and then to come unto the knowledge of the truth. World evangelization, the maturity of the saints, territorial transformation. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. The major challenge, in my opinion, and I submit to you that, particularly in Africa, there's been a growing dissatisfaction as far as nominal Christianity is concerned. People are beginning to be tired, tired of the ritual of religion, tired of church as usual. Are we together? Tired of communications of spiritual things without the power and the authority component. People across the horizon, Christians and non-Christians alike, are beginning to get fed up. Never has it been in history where God is collapsing the walls of denominationalism. People are opening their hearts right now. People who ordinarily would not open their hearts to certain dimensions of the kingdom are now being prepared to at least give these thoughts a chance. Perhaps I can find out about this. I have closed my heart to it, but let me be open, perhaps to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, perhaps to discipleship, perhaps to transformation. So there is a lot that is happening. Even unbelievers, men in the order of the utopian Enoch, are beginning to be interested in this God thing this kingdom thing. It is amazing how many non-Christians are connected right now in this nation and across the globe following this. They are, they are not Christians, but they are interested. They are learning. They want to know. They are very open-hearted. People are no longer afraid and closing themselves to say, this is what I know, this is what I believe. The same way many Christians are opening up their hearts too. They are saying, you know what? I'm tired of closing myself in fear, lying to myself. Let me open myself to occultism also. Let me open myself to some Eastern African religion also. So we live in a world and we live in a prophetic season where there is a greater sense of openness. And everybody, I tell you, they are looking for God. 
They are looking for his power. They are looking for meaning to their lives. Are we together now? People are getting tired of lying, getting tired of faking their living, acting as if things are working, whereas they have not truly experienced God like the Bible said men can experience him. So there's been a growing hunger. There's been a growing dissatisfaction. Even among men and women of God, particularly Nigeria and Africa, there's been a sudden reawakening. People are getting really serious with God to say, listen, if I do not know this, let me open up my heart to find out what else can there be in God. And this is a very good news for us all. However, I have found out that the major reason why it looks like the Holy Spirit is limited in terms of manifesting the reality of the God life, the reality of the supernatural power of God here on earth, the major reason has been the kind and the quality of vessels that are available. I want you to please listen. The major limitation, I can tell you, to the operation of the Spirit on earth today, beyond the protocol of prophecy, is that the kind and the vessels that are available are not aligned to the degree that can host that much that God wants to do. Now, in truth, there are vessels. But the Bible tells us very clearly, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, that the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then it says, in a great house, listen carefully, it says there are all kinds of vessels. Some vessels are gold, some vessels are silver, some vessels are wood, some vessels are earth or clay. And he told us immediately that some of these vessels already, they are unto honor. And some vessels are not unto honor. They are unto dishonor. Verse 21 says, if a man will purge himself. So you see that God wants to use the vessels. The master wants to use the vessels unto good works. But the kind and the quality of vessels that we have that are sincerely available. You see that now. They may not be able to birth the purposes of God to God's satisfaction. And it seems to me as though in every generation, God seems to bring a proposition to people within that generation. I want to move. I desire for this generation or any generation for that matter to see my power to see my glory. I desire for this generation to see scripture fulfilled. Sometimes, in a whole generation, he may find just a handful of people and he will have to make do with what is available. And the danger is that the moment there are few people, that move of God will not last because the few people are also human and the burden on them, either the burden of fatigue or the burden of temptations, or the, the, you know, just the humanity of men, or attacks from the kingdom of darkness. And then they are caught out of the way, and God's program is lost. Now God is coming to our generation again, like he has done fairly so to every generation. And the clarion call is not just Maranatha, God, come. He wants to come, but the quality of the vessels... And here's what the Lord revealed to me. There are essentially two defects with the vessels that God desires to use. Two defects. Number one is on one side, we have vessels that are completely disinterested in spirituality spiritual growth and kingdom come so this is the first problem that we have to deal with are we following now so we have vessels they do not even know they are vessels either they are not born again or they are born again but completely disinterested in god's program 
When we talk about this, there are some of you watching people shout under the anointing, watching people worship, watching people roll, and you are wondering with shock, what is this madness? There is a complete disinterest about anything God, anything kingdom. For others, it's even degenerated to sheer godlessness. They do not want to hear anything that has the name of Jesus on it. This is the first problem that God wants to solve. There are many people today who are not yet saved but are enlisted as part of the prophetic army in this move of God. That is a very serious thing. Did you know that when Jesus was talking to the 12 disciples and telling them they would still learn other things, the man who he would use was not saved. Paul, as at the time Jesus was telling the disciples, I have many other things to tell you. The man that the Spirit of God will use, who would play an active role in writing two thirds of the New Testament, was not even saved. A Pharisee, but hated everything Jesus. To the point that when they were stoning Stephen, the Bible tells us that as they were stoning Stephen, it was under the supervision of Paul as Saul. They kept their garments near him while they were destroying all of these people. And he saw it with joy and gladness. But one day the Bible tells us that on his way to Damascus, can you imagine that level of zeal? He obtained letter from the high priest to go and capture the people who were advocating this Jesus. And a light came, the Bible tells us. He fell down and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he says, who are you, Lord? Verse 5. He says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. That was his conversion. Do you know how many other souls are in Beer Palace right now? Do you know how many souls right now are in homes? Do you know how many souls right now are in some other places? They are not even aware that there is such a heavy mandate upon their lives. Imagine the world without a Reinhard Bonke. Just remove 10 people. Let me give you 10 names. Remove them from the history of the program of God and tell me what we have left. Remove Reinhard Bonke. Remove T.L. Osborne. Remove Maurice Sarulo. Are we together? Remove Billy Graham. Remove, say, Pat Robinson. Just remove these 10 people alone. What do we have left? There is nobody who is walking in the cutting edge of God's program today that was not a product of that generation. In Nigeria today, Remove all of these prophetic voices. It was T.L. Osborne who mentored Archbishop Benson in Dahosa. That thing you see came from T.L. Osborne. You see, history underreported so many things. And unfortunately, in Africa, we don't preserve history. So there is so much to know to strengthen our work that we do not know. The average young man that God is using now is not connected to history. We hardly know what happened before our arrival. So we cannot know what mistakes to cross, what mistakes to jump. And because our generation is largely an arrogant generation, we are repeating the same mistakes again. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of Scripture might find hope. Are we together? So the first problem that the Spirit of God wants to correct is the disinterest, complete disinterest in the things of God. Let me tell you the truth. You would think being a man of God, my life has just been full of meeting zealous people who love the Lord. I have seen people with such almost annoying disinterest for the things of God. And they have a right to reject God. It is their right. God will respect it. Except that in their disinterest, God will have to take their bishopric and give another person. Can I tell you, there are many people you see today, the burden on them is because their assignment they are carrying out was not the original script. 
Other people who were supposed to have risen have refused to rise. And so God has to make do with the available vessels. And you will see men start as maybe evangelists and keep evolving into other things because they have to midwife many assignments and prophetic programs until the people assigned are trained enough to take it. The danger to that kind of living is that they are the people who now become what you call the Joshua Selmans or the celebrities. The danger is that because you are carrying many people's assignments on your head, your own plus the assignment of a careless person who has refused to know God and rise, any attack that comes on you can destroy the body. The army was never supposed to be few. In any battle, number is an advantage. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so we have people, and some of these people I'm talking about are here listening to me, following by television, following across the globe. The Spirit of God is calling you. We are not just saved to sit down and be disinterested in the program of God. No. No. God wants to move in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Malawi, South Africa, Europe. America, everywhere, including Asia, the ends of the earth. But the vessels that he has to make do with, number one, are completely godless or disinterested. There are people who will stand from a distance and watch a crusade happening. And while the man is shouting in the name of Jesus, is it time for you to be saved? They will be laughing and perhaps maybe drinking and telling others, go for And they are completely disinterested. Yet, you see, the thing with God is that he has put eternity in the heart of every man. After all of those misbehavior, you see them still go back and say, there is something in my heart. I can't explain why I can't leave God. They will vow that they will never come to church. Later, you still find them roaming around crusade grounds. They don't even know what is bringing them there. I tell you, it's because they are part of that army. I'm saying this so that when you see such people, you begin to pray and intercede. The scribes and the Pharisees would never open up their heart to receive of what Jesus was saying, yet you will always find them in his crusade. If you don't like him, go away. But what was keep, still keeping them there? Because there is a cry. Some of you vowed that you will never come for koinonia. You are here now. You vowed that you will never come to church. In fact, you are here now. You insulted pastors and said everybody is a crook. You are still here. You know why? Because there is destiny and prophecy upon you. And let me tell you, provided you are alive, except you use your mouth to say, Lord, I reject you consciously and willingly. Leave me alone. I'm exercising my will. He will respect you. And for some, do you know, maybe based on God's prophetic blueprint, you are supposed to start your kingdom assignment actively, maybe at 20, 30. You are now 40, 45, 50. And God is saying, I'm still waiting. I know time is gone, but we'll find out what we can do with you. Do you believe what you're hearing? Disinterest. Especially for young people, because the glory of young people is their strength. And there are many young people who, I'm not talking of blind fanatism, I'll talk about that. An altar call is made, they are not interested. The Spirit of God is speaking to them. You would be the first person to get born again in your lineage. Why do you think he brought you to church? Just to watch a man? No, too small a reason. It's because he vowed to even your idol worshiper father. One day your idol worshiper grandfather or great grandfather had a voice from this lineage. A prophet will rise. He checked. Who is speaking? It is not my idols. It was God placing a witness. And even if it's after 40 years, you see, Ba, this God is truly a covenant keeping God. Even if it's after 40 years, He will come back again. I said something to this family. Let me come and find out if there is one vessel who has been born and the Spirit of God starts moving around. And then. He will find out that all the men are not serious and say, let me try the women. It doesn't matter, male or female. I just need someone as a witness that I need to birth my purposes in this family. 
There are other families, they didn't know God. But when missionaries came to that village, they said, you know what? There is one one bedroom there. I am an idol worshiper. I won't go for your crusade, but stay in that room. And while the man prayed there, there was a witness in heaven. And God said, because this man did this, we will insist that one seed from his loins must serve the Lord. And that's what has brought many of you to church right now. Because you are wondering, how did I get to Abuja? Look at the effort. God had to relocate you. Maybe NYSE brought you here and God refused to allow you to go back. Listen, I'm not just preaching. Listen to what I'm saying. God is a covenant keeping God. He's looking for vessels. And for some of you, because Satan has discerned the prophetic destiny that you have, he started scheduling men to distract you early. Maybe they started distracting you on campus. Maybe they started distracting you everywhere. And right now, the way you are, having dreams of mighty things, but as it is right now, there is nothing close to kingdom come in your life. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Let me tell you the truth. If it is the God of the Bible bar, those dreams will not stop. You will keep seeing yourself healing. Many people have not seen God when he's looking for a man. God is not ashamed though. God pursues men with the vulnerability that a young man looks to look for a wife. You know how a man is looking for a wife and he will stand in the rain, he doesn't care. That is how vulnerable God is. He will wait for you. If it's 10 years, he will wait for you. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come again, Hear me, I'm speaking to someone. Maybe you are in this auditorium. Maybe you are in any of the overflows outside. Maybe following from every nation. I'm interpreting to you the reason why you cry without understanding. The reason why you run away from God and find yourself coming back. It is not just because you are running and coming. There is a beckoning of the spirit. It's a language in the spirit. He's saying, remember, you are a vessel. I will not force you, but I want to use you. I will not force you, but I want to use you. You may have destroyed your life, but he can still use you. Desperately finding vessels. Can I tell you the truth? Every generation has been tried. And I said this in Lagos. Every generation will not fail. I can tell you this is the generation. There is a generation that by mercy and by grace will get it right. Mm. So number one, please sit down. We have vessels that are completely disinterested in the things of God. Even though there is prophecy upon their lives. They tremble at the word of God, but something within them has refused to respond to their maker. This is the reason why for every service we make altar calls, not just because we have a mandate. It is the last opportunity for someone in every service. God has been trailing that person for 10 years. Finally, God brought him to Koinonia. You see, let me tell you this. When you see the way we prepare for service in this ministry, this is also part of the motivation. When we pray, when we build up our spirits, when the worship team prepare to set the atmosphere, is because God knows he's finally finding one vessel. Finally. And I can tell you for someone watching me, 
the spirit of God is rejoicing at what I'm saying. Heaven is rejoicing because he's saying, finally, now I can fulfill what I promised this lineage. I finally found a vessel. But whether you will say yes to God or not is now up to you. Do you know it is within your power to look God at the face and say, I reject you. I reject the mantle you want to put upon my life. I'm, I'm not interested in your program. Get out of my life. He will respect you. But the consequence is that you and all those who were designed to be saved and blessed through your life will have to perish. Number two, the second defect with the vessels that God is looking for or the vessels that are available is that there is a lot of zeal, listen carefully, and spirituality or a semblance of it, but without true revelation and without compliance with divine patterns. Don't worry, I'll dictate it for you. You just listen to me. So on one hand, we have vessels who are not interested in God's program at all. Number two, we have vessels who have the zeal for God, but it is not according to knowledge. Their zeal has led them into various shades of legalism, self-righteousness, and effort in the flesh, and even in futility to host God and host his program. This is something that the Spirit of God wants to balance. I have seen many people, young people, young ladies, when you look at them, you see zeal. They love Jesus sincerely, but either because they were poorly mentored or either because they were bankrupt of an understanding of the patterns to follow, you see zealous people. If it's prayer, they will pray. If it's fasting, they will fast. If it's Bible study, they will study it, but they do not know the way to the city. Hallelujah. This is even more frustrating because if you do not love God, and that is why you are not being used, that's fine. But where you now seem to love God, and after dissipating energy in spiritual activities, you get lost and frustrated. Many in this generation are in that category. They are already following a path that looks like a path to power, but it is a path to doom.